what are the deal structures that we should use? Most of the time, we're gonna be just accommodating what the seller is willing to do. Remember, we have these buckets and we just plug them in. But at the same time, I do kind of want to get the cream of the crop, right? I do kind of want to get the deals that I'm actually seeking. So whatever the situation is, from like a free and clear house to a mortgaged house, a house that has no equity, or maybe it has some equity, from my perspective, and we talked about this earlier, it's always preferable to have the seller financing the house to us, meaning that we're gonna close on the house, we're gonna get title to the house, and we're gonna get the deed to the house. But if you can't get people beyond that, because they want to be paid in full before they provide us the ownership of the house, then we can resort to a lease purchase. Don, I know what you're thinking. We won't probably do that in Texas, but if we have to do that in Texas, we'll do that in Texas and then we'll obviously have to assign it unless we can convince them to, to change their mind later. But if any of the terms that we get, the down payment too high, the monthly payment too high, the price too high, the term, you know, the duration before we have to pay them in full is too low. If any of that scares us too much, we just give ourselves a longer escrow period so we can take that deal to our market of buyers and see what the market will bring, what the market will bear, so that we're making a decision to actually close with the seller based on what the market is telling us and can we beat those terms. So we give ourselves 90 days to close, which we may not need 90 days, but it, it, it provides a, 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 a layer of safety. It also uh, will cause the seller to have some concern. So there's that give and take. You have to kind of decide. And I'll help you make those decisions based on the deal evaluation forms that you send in. But I want you to understand that we don't have to go into these calls with a mindset of, I got to get this kind of a deal and then you start blowing sunshine up their butt and acting a fool on the phone you you should go into these calls with a certain demeanor a certain tonality we're going to do a whole session on posture art the tone that we use when we talk to these sellers it shouldn't be all excited all crazy rapport building like some of these people are suggesting that just makes you look stupid I mean, I, you can smell that coming a mile away. You ever walk into a car dealership and the guy's like, hey, how you doing? How about that game last night? You know what I mean? It's just like, whoa, back up. I know what you're doing. It just makes people be resistant. But if you can go into these calls and know that, look, this seller wants to sell their house. We have every solution that's available to them. We can service every solution. The seller's gonna do one of those things with us or without us, they are. And if you don't believe it, track it. I guarantee you, you will find the exact same thing that I have. 100% of the total market of sellers is available for us to transact with. Knowing that should give you extreme confidence when you call sellers. Not that you're gonna get the cream of the crop deal because you do have to get better at compelling them to be unafraid to do that. And people are afraid to do that for the most part. Give us terms, give us a lease purchase, owner finance it before they've been paid in full keep their name on the loan while we own it. There's legitimate fears there. We help them overcome those so that they can actually get what they want, which is more money for their house and the debt relief. You have to get good at that. But if you're not good at that yet, they still are gonna do one of the things that we service. Now, obviously we're hoping to get a hugely discounted price. Obviously we're hoping to get tremendous terms. Those dealers are simple, but if they weren't few and far between, everybody would do this, wouldn't they? Be careful what you wish for. Like from my perspective, I don't really want it to be mainstream for sellers to start doing this because then it becomes much more competitive. I'd rather it be what we have today. Well, who's gonna do that? Ain't nobody gonna do that. Meanwhile, we're picking them off left and right, left and right, why? because we developed the skills to compel the sellers to do something that is in their interest and is in our interest. The better you get at it, the more market share you're gonna be able to gobble up because people aren't willing to do what you're willing to do. And let's face it, we can always pay full price. That's a good thing for the seller. They just do have to be a little bit patient and get more money 
if they can take like a rent payment or an installment payment against the sale of the house until we pay them in full. They want more money, so let's give it to them. We just have to help them understand what the trade-off is. The trade-off is you get less money if you sell the traditional way because there's a lot of fees associated with that. Would you like me to share with you what those are? I'm not making a judgment on what you should do, but understand that that's the trade-off. You can sell the traditional way, but you're fishing in a pool for buyers that all are represented by people who are gonna siphon money from you. Inspector is gonna find things and, and then they're gonna ask you for concessions. Bank committee is gonna take forever to approve the loan, which means you got more HOA, you got another couple month, monthly payments probably, lawn care, electric, all these bills pile up and you don't even know if the bank's gonna approve them. The realtor is gonna need a commission, the title company is gonna want um, you know, all these fees. You've got closing costs on top of that. So at the end of the day, you just you end up with less money, which is fine. If, if, if your need for speed is that great, then by all means, go ahead. I'll help you get the most that you can in that environment. But if you really want to get the most money for your house, just be a little bit patient in getting it because I have a whole market that I can sell to. And the way I make money is not from you. I make it on getting the new financing to come in for them, that same financing that pays you off. But you got to be patient in getting it. But I'm going to pay you for your patience. I'm going to make you monthly payments for a period of time until we get you, you know, this juicy price that isn't dialed back by commission. So if you want that, the trade-off, of course, there is got to be patient. A lot of people just don't have any patience. But if you can find a way to be patient while I pay you for that, you're going to get a lot more money at the end of the day. And I'll show you the math on it. There's no debating that. So that's your trade-off. Less money, but now more money but a little bit later i'll work with you either way i'm agnostic as to what you choose and 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 that's what we that's that's sort of the approach we want to have because people are going to be much more willing to work with you they're going to see you as an expert they're going to see you as an advisor and they're going to be way more willing to work with you especially if they don't make a decision right then and then they hear from these schmendricks calling behind you that are giving them this same sales pitch about why they got to list it. And we're leaving the call. When you see the script, we're leaving the call with, look, just know, I'm not pressuring you to make any decision right now, but when we hang up this phone, you are, and you probably already have got these calls, you're going to get call after call after call from realtors wanting to list it. All I'm asking you to do is if you, if you can't do what I'm suggesting I'll do in terms of buying it right away, if you can't take payments for a period of time, it's totally cool. But please don't let me see this house listed with some schmuck realtor. Hire this schmuck realtor, me or my friend, because, because we'll, we'll, we'll do better by you than they will. So if you are going to go down that road at some point, because people are going to be pressuring you to do it, give me a chance to compete for that business. Would you at least do that? I ain't never hired no realtor. And then they end up doing it 30, 60, 90 days later. So we want to plant that seed that we're there for them. And then, we'll, of course, in our follow-up, um, you'll have a chance to, to get those deals. And a lot of times they just change their mind. I've had that happen a ton of times. You, they're like, they were hell no on taking payments. 30 days later, please get me out of this. Things start to get momentum towards the downside. If they just lost a job, if they're having problems in their marriage, if they get a new job somewhere else, if somebody's sick. I, I mean, I'm saying bad things now. It's not always bad things, but uh, things start to pile on and they just want to get this thing off their plate. And we're, we come in and help them. Now, we might get sellers that are open to payments, but the mix of terms isn't ideal. Like I said, high down, high payment, short duration, high price. We make those 90 day closes, or we push them down the continuum to the realtor sale, like I just said. Most are only going to sell for top price. They're only going to sell to an owner occupant who's bank qualified. Those buyers, they're almost always represented by realtors. Thus, we use our license or the realtor on our team to monetize those deals because the seller's going to need to pay a commission if they're going to get that sold because they're going to have to have the exposure on the MLS or they're going to be looking for that buyer who's represented. Okay, now this, I'm not saying to send this to sellers. Let me blow this up a little bit. I'm not saying you even need to show this necessarily to sellers. You can if you want to, but I want to show you what I just described, which is that trade-off. 
This is the trade-off. The traditional sale is an expensive trade-off versus keeping your hard-earned equity. Let me prove it to you. You have a $300,000 house. After the real estate commissions, 6% is a standard amount. It could be less. Sometimes it's even more. There's 18 grand off the top. Well, bank qualified owner-occupant buyers ask for a discount off the asking price. And there's almost always one given. Even if they only get, if, even if they, they buy it for 97% of the listing, that would still be a $9,000 $9, they got to take off. Then they, look, the, this kind of buyer doesn't pay the closing cost for the seller, but we will. That's going to be probably another six G's. Interest rates have gone up 500 basis points in the last year and a half. Therefore, these buyers are going to ask for a little bit of help on bringing down the rate, which means what you call loan points, points on a buyer's loan. The borrower agrees to pay a point up front and they get a lower rate. There goes 3000 out the door if they ask the seller to do that. Otherwise, we can't buy it. We can't afford that 30 year loan unless we can get it a little bit lower, which means you got to pay a point. Boom. They put that in their offer. Well, while they're waiting for all this to be approved by the bank, they got mortgage payments to make. 1200 a month, maybe you know, a month, two months on the market, and then another month to wait for the bank to approve the loan, could be longer, there's 3600 bucks. What about the utilities during that period of time? What about the property tax that they're responsible for during that period of time? What about the appraisal, the survey? What about the last minute inspection concession that occurs? They ask for $1,000 because there's paint chips on the crown molding, whatever. And they all, all these folks are asking for home warranties today. There's another 500 bucks. Before you know it, that 300,000, let's say you have a free and clear house. You thought you were gonna walk with 300 because that's what Zillow said it was worth? Because your neighbor sold his for 300? Well, he might've sold it for 300, he didn't get 300. After all of these costs, you add them up, you're walking with about 256 too. That's fine, people do it every day. That's totally fine. You can do that. But wouldn't you like to get all 300? That's what I'm talking about. I'll give you all 300. None of them. I'm paying all of this stuff. You get 300. We're going to pay you 300. So do you want the 300? You just don't get it right away. We got to structure some monthly payments around it. Or do you want 256? The dude abides. Whatever you choose, I'm good with it. I'll help you either way. Now, again, I'm not saying whip this spreadsheet out and get all formal with people. I am saying understand the trade-off so that you can have a dialogue about it. Y'all with me on that? That's what we're trying to do. We want to have a dialogue about this. Deal evaluation. We have to plug the seller into the right outlet. And that is determined by us asking questions so that we know what the best fit is. We got to get answers to certain questions from the seller. And then we also have to just run a, a little bit of research so that we can evaluate a deal. Let's talk about all of that. You guys are going to love this section. Actually, you're going to see how easy life can be. If you'll allow yourself by allow yourself, I mean, put in the work to understand all the concepts that we've covered in, in you know, these first 130 pages of the manual. And a lot of it is redundant, right? To reinforce concepts. So if you can understand what, what it is we're really doing here, when you get to the deal evaluation, we're, it, is, it is really just asking questions of the seller. It really is. And then plug and play, plug and play. Some will, some won't, so what? Someone's waiting next and you get to choose because we can work with everybody. But, but here's what we must learn. The lowest price, we have a way of asking that. Are they open to taking monthly payments? We have a way of asking that. Do they have the house free and clear? Is there a mortgage on it? We won't even get to that if they answer negative to willing to take monthly payments. I don't need to know what the mortgage is if they're not willing to take monthly payments. So we learn lowest price. 
and then we learn if they're willing to take monthly payments. If they aren't, our job is easy. Psh, they're going right to bucket three. If they are or they have questions, now we have to continue. You got the house free and clear? They might just tell you the mortgage info based on that question. If they don't, okay, help me understand what, what's the balance on the mortgage and what's the payment because we have to structure something around that. Then we can learn what the least they'd be able to do monthly is because they're not, we don't really want them coming out of pocket. Meaning if they have a payment of, if it's free and clear and they, their payment is just taxes and insurance, we could probably get a really good um, low payment on it. But if the house is mortgaged to the hilt and they've got a payment of 2,800 or something, um, we're not really going to ask them what's the least you can take each month. We're going to say, well, I assume if we cover what your outgoing expenses are on this until we pay you off in full, you know, the lender and you off in full, uh, then you're good, right? You get the debt relief. That's fair, isn't it? So you ask it in a little bit different way. There's a way that we learn how long we can get before we have to actually pay them off in full or pay the loan off in full. If there's no equity, they don't generally care that much, right? If there's no equity to be had and they just want the debt relief, we're probably gonna get all 30 years, 25, 20 years, whatever's left on that loan. If they have a ton of equity, yeah, then they're gonna to wanna to get at least some of their money uh, more quickly, but we'll learn that. We have a whole process for all of that. We have a whole process for being able to get these deals with no down payments, but sometimes that doesn't fly and they, request a down payment. We want to get it as close to zero as possible if that happens. We got to learn that. All of this is embedded within the deal evaluation form that I'm going to be taking you through. We got to know something about the condition, right? Are there repairs that are needed right now? What about the financial condition? You behind on this? You've been paying? You've been paying your mortgage? Now please tell me I'm not talking to you behind your realtor's back. You don't have this thing listed with a realtor, do you? You'd be surprised at how many times that happens. We're going to find that out. So you're selling the house, but you told me you were married. Does your wife know that you're selling her house? All owners have to agree. And are they ready to go? Are they ready to rumble? We got to know. Once we get this information, then we can determine, do we want to go ahead and do a quick comp analysis? which isn't that difficult to do. Do we want to do a quick rent estimate? Kind of get an idea. And we'll just enter that stuff on the deal evaluation. Then you can jump on this call. You can hit me on Messenger, whatever, and I'll help you evaluate the deal and decide what to do next. Or if you're already self-reliant, you can do that on your own, right? I'll show this to you real quick, but I'm going to go through it more thoroughly tomorrow. Okay, this form right here. If you click on that link that I just showed you and, and read through these questions, which I'm going to do tomorrow, you'll find that they parallel quite closely with our script, which is really nice. I don't want you to use this in place of the script, of course, but all of these questions really are learned right as we go through our script. Now, why do I have this process? Why do all of these fields need to be filled out? 